And with a record of 16 and 66, the Minnesota Timberwolves are our next team on worst to first here. We both had them as the 12th best team in the West with the recent additions of first overall pick Carl Anthony Towns, savvy veteran Tayshaun Prince, another savvy, savvy veteran Andre Miller, and the unfortunate step down loss of Flip Saunders due to uh, his cancer treatment and the promotion of uh, interim coach Sam Mitchell. This is a team that um, right off Andrew Wiggins' Rookie of the Year play last year is not projected to make have a lot of wins, but there's a lot of potential here. Uh, Justin, we, we've spoken about a bit off camera, but I think this is one of those few teams that tries to fuse the right foundation for the future with the right veterans to, to you know, bring them forward into the light. Uh, especially with the uh, with the signings of Garnett and such, um, I mean, there's a lot of things to love. But w- what do you love about these Timberwolves? Um, I love the fit. I, I really think that they've developed a environment that's conducive to Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns really finding their potential. I think those two players fit incredibly well together. Um, I think having Ricky Rubio there for all his warts. I mean, he still does a lot of things that you really want him to do, which is push the pace, which you want with mobile players. Um, He defends really well, doesn't turn the ball over a ton, finds guys where they want it. Um, So I think he's going to really help those guys develop. Um, I think with the Timberwolves, we are starting to get to the point where even though the Wolves are obviously the longest of long shots to make the playoffs, if everything were to click, if Pekovic were to be healthy, if Wiggins takes a big step forward, if Carl Anthony Towns is Rookie of the Year, um, there's a case for them to get that eight seed, which, I mean, that eight seed really is up to grabs. Um, oh, and there's but, one player I didn't mention before. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Um, Amanya uh, uh, Belisa, who just uh, came oh, over. Yes. Uh, yeah. So he has uh, some veteran presence there. Right, yeah. He's a very talented, polished player um, that's... I mean, even though Kevin Garnett's going to start, I, I see uh, Belicia getting the bulk of the minutes at power forward. Uh, you've got guys like Gory Jang that have had a big impact in the past that could play a role. Like, there's a lot of depth. There's a lot of veterans. Um, you have really high-end young talent in Wings and, uh, Wiggins and Towns. Um, uh, there's a lot to be optimistic about. And if, if you're picking league pass teams, this would certainly be one of those next year. Absolutely, and and one name one name that didn't get uh, mentioned enough there was Zach Levine, who I think is going to have a nice progression this year. I some people criticize me on this. I I kind of see it as a poor man's Russell Westbrook in terms of his his ball handling is yeah. much improved. He's a gym rat. I know, I know, but you know he can't play some one, can play some two, and he's friends with Andrew Wiggins, and I think that matters. Like 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 I think the continuity, like I think the fact that Garnett stayed to tutor. You know, Carl Anthony Towns and, you know, it helps that your two young guys are studs, first of all, great size mm-hmm. for the position, great ability, and they're both gym rats, both hyper intelligent, they want to learn, no egos. I mean, this mm-hmm. is almost the perfect situation. And if you go up and down uh, the roster, you still have Anthony Bennett. I mean, do I expect him to be on this team when, in a couple years? Maybe not. Uh, you have guys like Adrian Payne, Shabazz Muhammad, who go under the radar, but produce when mm-hmm. they play. At, and... You know, Kevin Martin has been a savvy veteran for years. Uh, yep. uh, whichever team he's on, he, he can hit outside shots and he can be that veteran. Andre Miller, again, you know, and they brought in uh, Tyrus Jones j- right, right off a championship with Duke. So it they, you know, we speak a lot about character with teams like, uh, you know, San Antonio and such. But, you know, this is a team top to bottom that they're starting to build almost that San Antonio mold, you know, like. I've heard some Carl Anthony uh, Towns comparisons of kind of a Timish Duncan kind mm-hmm. of player. I mean, I mean, he does different things, obviously, but in terms of mentality, and you know, I think the best thing to happen to Andrew Wiggins was Carl Anthony Towns. Mm-hmm. There are many reasons you could state one: it's a big and a little whatever. I think it allows Wiggins to be the second best player on this team, and I think that. Yep is going to allow him to really step up and reach his potential. I think having to be that number one was never going to fit his shoe. I, I completely agree. I, I 
it's not an indictment on Wiggins. Uh, I just really am that high on Towns. I, I'm with you. I, I think Towns is going to be the best player on the Timberwolves moving forward. Um, kind of speaking to your foundation comments there, it's kind of nice when you have Garnett to mentor Towns. You have Prince there to mentor Wiggins. You have Andre Miller there to um, mentor Ricky Rubio and Tyus Jones. Like right where you have those crucial positions and those guys that you're really hoping are your, your core pieces, you have guys that basically anyone around the NBA would rave about for their leadership. And um, there's Kevin and Martin Miller. on the offensive side of the ball for Wiggins, right? So you have Prince and and Martin, so uh, going around screen right. things like that, right? Exactly. And um, Shabazz Muhammad, I mean, he came in last year in fantastic shape. He was dominating prior to uh, going down with injury. Um, there's there's just a lot there. And um, I think there's a lot of reasons for Wolves fans to be very excited about what they're building. Absolutely. Now, uh, this is a team that they're going to take their lumps, right? Uh, they're a young mm-hmm. team. But when you're going forward... My biggest question is, there's two guys who really stick out, because I can kind of feel out a lot of this team, but the two guys who get to me are Ricky Rubio, is he part of their future, and Zach Levine, do you think he ever turns into the star that his potential should allow him to be? Uh, I would dispute that Zach Levine has star potential, Um, I think from a highlight standpoint he does, I think he could be a killer combo guard off the bench. Uh, someone that does have a lot of impact, uh, maybe similar to even a Gerald Green, although their games are different. Um, I, I think a solid bench player is going to be kind of his ceiling. Ricky Rubio, I'd keep him around for a year or two, see if he develops a little bit. He's still only um, 24, right? Yeah, he's, he's still only 24. He actually shot fairly well from mid-range. Um, not a high volume of threes, but he's starting to show some of that. What he really needs to do is finish well at the rim. He's He finishes terribly at the rim, and if you're going to be a non-scoring point guard, that's the one area that you have to score from. Um, we saw that with Rondo in Boston prior to Rondo's decline. Um, you have to be able to finish at the rim, and that's something that he just hasn't been able to do. And given how long he's been in the league, I, I'm not sure how realistic that is. Um, I'd keep him around for the development of Wiggins and Towns, but long term, you might want to be looking elsewhere um, for a core point guard, which it's possible they have that in Tyus Jones. See, I think how you see um, uh, Zach Levine's how I see Tyus Jones. Um, I think he's kind of that bench point guard. I don't ever see him being a star. Maybe I'm wrong. No, me, me either. Me either. Um, but uh, but I'm, I'm just saying that he might be the future over Rubio. Um, but long term, sure. you probably need to get that starting point guard. Sure, but I, but I think it is interesting that the one thing he had trouble with Rubio is scoring at the rim, and they brought in Andre Miller, who for a point guard is actually really good at that. You know, it's oh, a yeah. tough game and everything. So again, when we're speaking of proper mentors, they're kind of checking off all the boxes. And so I think you have to give, I can't believe I'm saying this, but Flip Saunders some credit. And I'm not trying to uh, poke fun because of his situation. Obviously, it's, a, it's an unfortunate uh joke but for years he wasn't uh, seen as the best gm in the world um yeah. but i think I, I think overall he's done a good job since they took over from david Kahn. i mean david Kahn was awful i mean he passed on steph curry drafted ty lawson uh, Ste- uh, uh, twice uh, by the way uh, i remember he got a uh, uh, johnny flynn and ricky rubio over him yeah and then drafted ty lawson later on and traded lawson which lawson's probably the best out of the three so oh yeah, yeah. he was that third yeah so yeah they could have had Rubio and Steph Curry and Ty Lawson mm-hmm. instead of Rubio. And if you want to get really depressing, which I mean, every Wolves fan that listens to this has probably heard it a million times, but they did also draft Wesley Johnson over to Marcus Cousins, which you could have had a Boogie Cousins and Kevin Love front court. Um, so, I mean, that kind of stuff hurts. Sorry, I'm kind of crying on the inside right now just hearing that. <laughs> And and, and, and and that's most recent stuff. I mean, like, uh, uh, people forget about the whole Joe Smith fiasco where they lost all those draft picks with KG mm-hmm. back in the day. But anyway, so back into the radar, Minnesota Timberwolves should be a fun team. I mean, uh, like you said at the start of the, the start of the episode, I think probably a top three, four team of my league pass, uh, them and maybe Orlando. 
really an up and down fun team probably not a lot of wins but there should be a lot of development and Andrew Wiggins fresh off a, a brutal loss with Team Canada in mm-hmm. the uh, finals there but uh, look he should be hungry Anthony Towns uh, lost in the finals to Duke he's going to be hungry he's made that very clear sometimes a loss is better than a win and when it comes to the bigs keeping those guys hungry and wanting more and wanting revenge may be the best thing for these young wolves uh, as they continue to progress so I want to thank you guys for joining from Justin and myself keep it locked here on hoopslounge.com where's the first we'll catch you on the next episode